And welcome, everybody, to today's exciting episode. Yes, 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 yes. Nice one. <laughs> you're excited for today's episode. I am, and I'm not. <laughs> you are, and you're not. Well, can I can I kick the episode off with just a little story? Go for it, my man. Because um, we've got plenty of time. We have. And I I just wanted to tell you about um, this little story I've got. Where do you remember a few months ago I broke my foot? Yes, yes. I've never mentioned that on the podcast at all. <laughs> no, that, I know. No. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that happened. And obviously, I spent many weeks sat in my conservatory on the sofa, just watching Netflix and stuff. And I got a bit bored. Uh, so I decided to get a bird feeder, mm-hmm. just one of those little plastic tube ones, you know, where the, the the seed falls out the bottom. Yeah. And the birds can come along and perch on it and peck it out. So I got one of those and I hung it in the rose arbor just across the garden from the conservatory. So I could sit on my sofa and I could I could watch the little birds feeding. Yeah. And it worked. It, I did well. It worked and it didn't. <coughs> Excuse me. I got I got sparrows. Not the most exciting yeah. birds. Yeah, average. But it was nice at the start because uh, obviously it was a lot earlier in the year. And the birds had only just started to fledge, like the, the young ones. Mm-hmm. So I was getting whole families of sparrows sitting on the rose arbor in the roses. And the little ones, the new fledglings, would just quiver their feathers saying they're hungry. And the parents would fly down to my bird seed feeder, pick up some seed and then fly back up to their little fledglings and... And pop the seeds in their mouth, and nice. it was really, really nice. But I wasn't happy. No, no, because spar- I mean, sparrows are nice to look at, particularly in abundance when you've got loads of them. But they are a bit boring. They're only brown. Mm, yeah, brown little sparrows. And I wanted some colour, so you know, I wanted some finches or some blue tits or something mm. like that. And uh, it just didn't happen. Months and months went by, and I never saw a single one. So the other day. When me and Haley were out shopping, I thought, well, let's try changing tactic. I picked up a bag of birds' peanuts, you know, <laughs> right. and I got a feeder, one of the, the wire mesh feeders. Mm-hmm. And I put that in the shopping basket, brought it home, and I thought, right, I'm going to give this a go. So I filled up the feeder with the peanuts, and I've hung it next to the other feeder on the rose arbor, and it took two days, Yeah, but I finally saw a blue tit. Nice. Nice. And then uh, today, obviously, Haley sent me a text message saying that she'd seen three of them using oh. it. Uh, she thinks they were great tits. Um, but they, they, yeah, they, they were they were at last finding the nuts. So the moral of the story, I guess, to put it in a different context, is to catch the right fish, you need the right bait. Yeah. But since we're not talking about fish, we're talking about birds, I would say if you want to see tits in your garden, get your nuts out. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, that's a good rule. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so what are we talking about today then, Josh? <laughs> I'm a bit flustered now with all this talk of tits. <laughs> Whew. Well, today, we've mentioned it before a couple times. So I thought, you know what? I think it's time. I think it's time we did the Tower of Babel. Oh, the infamous Tower of Babel. Yes. Which so. I think, didn't you bring up first in the Giants episode? Yes. And you were quite excited about it to do to do a full episode then, so... Yes. But did... also known as the Gate of God. Oh. The Tower of Babel. Well, fair enough, yeah. And I was calling it Babel, but <laughs> then when I started doing research and I saw a few videos of people saying it... Not a single person said Babel. No, so. I wouldn't imagine they did, no. <laughs> yeah, so Tower of Babel. The Tower of Babel, that's how I've always pronounced it, yeah. Yeah, so this is a, this is an, an alright story. Yeah. But it, there's not much to it. Okay, so we're, I've, we're a little lacking on thickness then, are we? Yeah, yeah, so, you know, we'll, we'll see where it goes. Yeah. There might be some stuff in there that people don't know and... Might catch you off guard. Might I'm hoping. Do. I'm hoping the dates might catch you off guard again. Oh well, it normally does. So, the Tower of Babel is a biblical myth, narrative in Genesis 11, one to nine. It is the myth or story meant to explain why the world's people speak different languages, all across mm. the globe. Oh really? Yeah. So, so all these languages came from one tower. Yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's uh, it's a bit like um, 
so you know re religion has the is it is it God that made the world in seven days according to was it to Christianity? Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's kind of like those ones where it's like um, this is explaining how there's different languages across the world because uh, I mean we all came from Adam and Eve, didn't we? Uh, yeah, if you if you believe that yeah. side of the story, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So and I I do believe when I done my. Uh, research the one language that everyone spoke before the Tower of Babel. Can I guess? Go for it. Oh, it's a difficult one, actually. Yeah. Well, well see, it can't be confirmed, but this it's is some kind of ancient Mesopotamian language, wouldn't it? It is. Yeah, yeah. Um. Well, there's there's two languages, two that, languages. that are rumored to be. I say rumoured, no one's around anymore. But they're the two languages that, according to the what's, research... What's the one that's written down that looks like um, golf tees? All written in pattern, arranged in patterns. Oh, uh, is that Sanskrit? Yes. Yeah? Sanskrit's one of them. Okay. And Hebrew is the other. Ah, okay, fair play. Yeah. But, you know, there's no confirmation on that, it's just what is rumoured to be the language that everyone spoke before the Tower of Babel. Imagine the earliest language would be Ugg. <laughs> <laughs> Ugg, Ugg. <laughs> so according to the story, a united human race speaking a single language and migrating eastward comes to the land of Shinar, which is the southern region of Mesopotamia, uh, according to the Hebrew Bible. Right. So they agree to build a city and a tower with the top reaching into the sky among the clouds to reach to reach heaven. heaven. Yeah. So yeah. To, yeah. They wanted to build a tower so that they could climb their way to God, basically, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. And that's pretty much the story of the Tower of Babel. Okay. Podcast over. <laughs> See you next week, everybody. <laughs> so I have got some uh, interesting stuff about it. Obviously, we'll go into a bit more detail of it, but that is the essential basic of the story. Who was it? I'm sure there was one man in particular, and I can't remember who it was that was responsible for the, the, the idea of building the... Your favourite person from Giants, old oh? Nimrod. Nimrod! <laughs> yeah. Part of the... Is it Nephilim? Nef the Nephilim, Nephilim, yeah, I think you said, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, he was responsible. So he was a he's, warrior. He's the guy that drew up the plans. That He was the architect. Yeah. Right. Yeah, basically, he was the guy that was. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, he was. He wasn't against God, but he'd kind of turned his back on God. He right. wasn't. He wasn't feeling it. He was. He was thinking, they've already done this flood thing, and I'm not happy about that. <laughs> so, so I'm gonna climb up there and beat him up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but he didn't manage it because he got turned into a mountain. No, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so the tower. Is said to be built in well between two thousand seven hundred BC and right. three thousand four hundred BC. Actually, that not surprised. Not surprised no. <laughs> because you obviously said that you've mentioned Genesis already, yes, yeah, and that is the first book of the Bible, which that is the Old Testament. So it's mm -hmm. definitely older than two thousand years. So yeah. somewhere up to 3,400 BC. It actually doesn't surprise me on this occasion. Right, I'm with you. Okay. Now, I'm going to go into <coughs> slight detail of the Tower of Babel. Okay. But it's going to be a little bit confusing, but it will make sense at the end. So right. I'm going to talk about different gods and stuff. Yeah. But it, it will make sense. Has there ever actually been a proper description of what it looked like? Yes. Yeah, yeah. There's pictures. Um, the the Colosseum in Italy got inspiration from it, from, oh, right. from the Bible okay. and things. So it does actually look a little bit like the Colosseum but at the base of it. Extending further up and getting yeah, narrower, I would but it, it's as wide as it is tall. It's a, it's a huge structure from... You know, from uh, I'll, I'll get into the, where I get my information from. Yeah, certain books and things. Um, but when you see the the drawings of what it's supposed to look like, it actually looks like a lot of houses stacked up on top of each other. Oh, really? And then there's just a huge kind of like soaring tower that goes right <laughs> up into the clouds. at the top. <laughs> yes, but fun fact, it was never completed. Oh, right. And I'll get to that. Oh. 
So the tower was built for the god Yahweh. 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 <laughs> okay, fair enough. Y a h w e h. Yeah, I have heard of a Yahweh before. And <laughs> when I was writing the research out, every time I looked at that word, I kept wanting to call it Yeehaw. <laughs> <laughs> the cowboys are like, Yeehaw. So yeah, Yahweh, uh, who was the god of the Israelite kingdoms of Israel and Judah. Yeah. Um, he was a livid. Oh, this is the one word that I knew I was going to mess up. Leviathan deity. So he okay. was <laughs> considered a, a god. And uh, he was also known as a divine warrior leading the heavily arm, uh, the heavenly army against Israel's enemies. Oh, oh, that's a mouthful. Whew. So Yahweh could control the weather as, as well to help in war, to help the Israel sides. Well, yeah, I suppose, well... If he if he's a god, yeah, that was the his Christian god created the flood. So you know you'd think <laughs> not, any god should be able to control the weather, shouldn't they? Yeah, and so with Yahweh observing the new city and the tower that they had built for him, uh, the confounds of their speech, uh, he decided to muddle them all up so they they couldn't no longer understand each other, and then he scattered everyone around the world. Oh. That's why we have different languages. Fair enough. So this they didn't god develop over time, then, like you know, <laughs> as we've been taught all our lives that you know English is made up of like part Germanic and part Italian and part French and yeah, know. but no, it wasn't. It was it was Yahweh. Yeah, yeah, the god Yahweh he just segregated everybody and then went. You can go over there. Boo! You can go over there. <laughs> yeah. Boo! You can go over there. Boo! And the Chinese, you can get right over there because no one's going to understand you. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, so he just scattered everyone around the world. Fair play. Um, I'll get into why, because there's not one explanation. There's, there's several. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> it gets confusing, but we'll, we'll get there. So some modern scholars have associated the Tower of Babel with known structures such as the Etamenanki. <laughs> Now, that is a word. You, you've really gone to town on these words today, haven't you? You, you didn't want to say this podcast at all. You didn't no. want to pronounce it. <laughs> There's so many words in it, so I do apologise to everyone listening. So the Etamenanki is the, considered the foundation of heaven and earth. Right, yeah. And that now exists as ruins located roughly 56 miles south of Baghdad, Iraq. Okay, and right. some say that that is the foundation of the Tower of Babel. Oh, right. And it's so just a ruin, is it, at the moment? It's complete ruins yeah. now. And obviously, this hasn't been proven. There's no actual evidence of the Tower of Babel. But archaeologists and historians um, and the people that study religious education and things yeah, like yeah. that, if they were to say that it was in one place... The Tower of Babel would have been there in Baghdad. Right, in okay, Iraq. yeah. So that, that's the favourite. And that's the only thing that is close to the story based on the foundations and how big it is okay, and, yeah, and the yeah. ruins. So, the also, there is a thing called ziggurats. Ziggurat. Have you, yeah, have you heard of zigg ziggurats I, before? I've heard the word, but I don't really know that much. I don't know the definition. So, a, a ziggurat is like a... A huge compound yeah. that is also as wide as if, as it is tall, right? And it's kind of like a bunker when you see pictures of them, yeah. Because uh, I'm pretty sure there's still some around today. Like um, they, they people don't use them. Really, I think it probably is. Yeah, like I said, I've heard hmm. the word. I've just never, never really. They're just kind of like giant sand bunkers, like right. huge. Like some of them are in the middle of nowhere. Some of them are in amongst rocks and things like hidden oh, okay yeah yeah that makes more sense yeah yeah and so <laughs> the uh it's where the gods were believed to live was at the top of these towers of these ziggurats right. so this isn't the tower of babel these are other structures that are similar okay. does that make sense so, yeah and it's believed that gods would always live at the top of these towers of all these ziggurats that are placed around mainly the Middle East. Fair enough. So, <laughs> well, of, 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 but the gods live at the top of buildings. Yeah, the top of the tops of the towers that are in the 
in the peaks of... So presumably the, the population of people mm -hmm. living in these areas built those buildings especially for the gods to live at the top. That's exactly why they built them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Because, the... like, obviously, in Greek mythology, the gods live at the top of Mount Olympus. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, yeah, Is it Japan? I think they believe that there's gods at the top of Mount Fuji and that sort of thing. So, I mean, this this recur is a recurring theme all over the yeah. world, isn't it? So that... and you've caught on already. <laughs> so that is the get-out-of-my-head pirate. <coughs> oh, I'm so, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 it's all good. So... That is what I was doing was there's many examples in different religions of similar structures of the Tower of Babel. Right, so yeah, it's not yeah. just Christianity. There's all sorts. And I'm going to go through some of the other religions as well. Um, so with these gods living in these towers, it's said that only priests and highly respected individuals could enter the, mm. the, the chambers of where these gods are and yeah, communicate yeah. with the gods. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot of societies that are like that with their temples and stuff, isn't there? Yeah, and society and Sumerians would offer gifts such as music. Sumerian, that was the language, was the language. I was trying to think of when I said Sanskrit. I actually accidentally said Sanskrit, <laughs> <laughs> I meant Sumerian. Well, <laughs> happy accident there, I suppose. And they would offer gifts, uh, music, food and statues to live in the... The right, bottoms yeah, of, the, yeah. of the temple, so it'd be like a big old community. And there is a place called the the Asagala Ziggurat, <laughs> <laughs> which was dedicated to the god Marduk, <laughs> right in Babylon, and he was known as the king of the gods. And his symbol is the spade that you see on like a, a playing card. That, oh right, that yeah, kind yeah, of, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, spade. And he was associated with the planet Jupiter. Nice. So this is another example of these big ziggurats and towers being built for another god. Yeah. So I don't know what religion that is, but it uh, is. Uh, a, a, a complete side step here, mm -hmm. a bit of a tangent. But he was uh, associated with the planet Jupiter. Yeah. And this was somewhere around 3,000 years ago. Yeah. And... Isn't it strange that 3,000 years ago, some cultures knew that certain stars in the sky were different, were planets? Yeah, yeah. It's baffling to me that it's, it's astrology it, back in the day, that they could work all of that out. Yeah, and it's then nuts. suddenly that knowledge kind of got lost. And for like hundreds of, you know, nearly a thousand years before people started discovering it again, and then, mm. you know other people started getting famous for discovering these things like Newton and, and, and that sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, back then, they already knew about it. And I, I strongly believe that they they weren't as simple as people make out. I really do think there was some sort of technology. This is and... honestly why I, I do kind of subscribe to the old ancient alien theory. Yeah. I honestly wouldn't surprise me if alien culture was helping us to develop, you know, the, these all these thousands of years mm -hmm. ago. Yeah. Um, so I've just got a couple more examples of um, re different religions. Yeah, go So surprising, the Quran has a story with very similar attributes okay. to the Tower of Babel. Um, so although it was set in Egypt, not the Middle East, well... It's not a lot of difference. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the pharaoh asked humans to build him a giant stone tower so that he can go to heaven and confront the god Moses. Oh, right. So when you joked earlier about going up there and beating him up. In, <laughs> that's in literally Quran, what one of the pharaohs wanted to do. Yeah, yeah. So that's in the in the Quran. I'll bet you don't know which pharaoh it was, do you? No. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I didn't want to. The thing is, like, uh, when it comes to religion and stuff, I'm not a religious person. Yeah. So I don't want to start diving into certain things especially the quran and things that i know nothing yeah, about I suppose, yeah, and then yeah. if i get something wrong then it, i just don't want to offend or anything like that whereas if i just have a little paragraph and possibly something is wrong people can't hate that much on yeah, me that's because... fair enough. yeah if, you, if you're not given the specifics then yeah <laughs> you can't get blamed for getting it wrong <laughs> so the phrase tower of babel does not actually appear in the bible nope it is always referenced as the city or the city and the tower. 
Yeah, no, I don't think Tower of Babel is of Christian origin. It's like you say, it might be from. I think it's Hebrew. Yeah, Jewish Hebrew it could be Jewish or, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of a lot of this stuff uh, kept coming back to the Jewish faith and Hebrew yeah, language, yeah. and um, and also Babel is the Hebrew name for Babylon and means to jumble or confuse. Oh, right, okay. So oh, talking about the languages, yeah, jumbling yeah, up yeah. the languages. Yeah, it all links up, doesn't it? Now, why would God jumble up everyone's language, I hear you say, pirate? Uh, yeah, why? Why? <laughs> why does he not want us to all communicate? I know, right? Surely we are all one big family and he loves us all equally. You would think so. You would think, wouldn't you? You would think it would be better, well, not better, um, less culture involved, but... You would think that everyone communicating in one love, one peace, one world yeah. would be a good idea. But then, when a mother has seven kids and they're all... <laughs> and mother's like, just get out of my blooming air. Mm. Go to your room, go to your room. You two, you've got the same room. Go outside. <laughs> you know, maybe it's something like that. You know, God just got fed up of us all bickering. Yeah. So he was like, right, now you can't speak each other's language and you can go there and you can go there. Yeah. <laughs> so I've actually got three possible reasons. As well, I've to... just covered it, mate. I've done it. That Can is you? probably the more likely one, <laughs> to be honest. So the first one, this is the one that is heavily believed to be the main reason. Okay. Is uh, God was concerned that humans had blasphemed by building the tower to avoid a second flood. So God brought into existence multiple languages. So the great flood had already happened. Noah's yeah. Ark and all that didn't exist. So Noah's <laughs> Ark and all of that. <laughs> and uh, so they decided to build this tower to avoid a second flood from God. Okay. And God didn't like it. And he said, you're blaspheming. It's gone to your head. So that's one reason. Another one Fair enough. was the construction of the tower was an act of defiance against God. Ooh. And God believed humans had too much power and Nimrod was a tyrant. <laughs> <laughs> Old Nimrod. Yeah. <laughs> the... How dare you invent concrete? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, that brings up the whole conversation of God and humans. There's a bit of competition. Um, so... The the reference I got there was obviously Adam and Eve with the serpent was a yeah. story of God testing humans. So the second explanation there was suggesting that God was trying to test the humans again. Yeah, like, you've got too much power. I'm gonna I'm gonna humble you a bit. I'm gonna bring you down to earth. I'm gonna mix up your languages and scatter you across the world. Yeah, fair so. enough. <laughs> You're too powerful in in the numbers that you've got, so I'll just split you up. <laughs> yeah. And the third one, the gods wanted control of the heavens and the cosmos, creating war for supremacy. So war amongst gods there is the third reason. What, to split up humanity? Yeah. That yeah, made yeah. zero sense to me. Yeah, it didn't really make much sense to me either. <laughs> well, well, I suppose, yeah. It doesn't have to make sense if you find it. And, then, yeah. and also, I just think that's a cool sentence, fighting over the cosmos for supremacy. yeah. yeah. Now, yeah, why not? I have got one bit of uh, information here that I couldn't believe I stumbled across it. Have you heard of the Book of Jubilees? No. The Book of Jubilees, it contains the most detailed accounts found anywhere in the world of the Tower of Babel, okay, including yeah. measurements and all sorts. And it's, oh. an, it's an old, ancient Jewish book and it has 50 chapters, 1,341 verses, and it comes from the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. Ethiopian Orthodox Church? Yeah. Aren't they the guys that claim to have the Ark of the Covenant locked in a temple somewhere? Possibly. <laughs> You'd know more about that I than me. I might be wrong, but I think that might be, it might be them. <laughs> so, the Book of Jubilees says that the Tower of Babel used bricks, stone, and clay to cement them all together. It took 43 years to build, but was never 
completed because God obviously scattered everyone across the world, yeah. so it never got completed. Knocked it down as well. But expect. when that's it was... That's why there's not even any ruins. Just yeah. like, oh, <laughs> get rid of that. <laughs> just completely wiped it away. <laughs> um, and it measured 8,150 feet tall, which is 1.6 miles. Feet, or would that be cubits? Maybe cubits. <laughs> I assume it's feet because you've written down feet, but um, back in those days, the cubit was a different distance between your elbow and your wrist. And it's around about a foot oh. anyway, isn't it, on most okay. adults? So most things were measured back then in like cubits rather than It could very well be cubits inches, then. Yeah. Um, but that's 1.6 miles tall, yeah. the tower. And the whole... That would <laughs> literally be... What six times taller than the tallest building that we've even created today? Yeah, isn't the Eiffel Tower like a? Is it a thousand feet? Yeah, a thousand feet, <laughs> but not one point six miles, is it? No, There's and nothing gets close <laughs> to one point six miles. Look, Mount Everest is only five miles from base to tip. Right. If you were to measure it straight up, it's, I think it's just over five miles. So you're talking a fifth of Mount Ever Everest. Yeah. Seems quite tall. Yeah. And th it right. was actually 51.4 miles in circumference. So the whole area. Because I said about the... So, oh, circumference. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's yeah, got to be wide yeah, as yeah, well yeah. as tall to have everyone there. So 51 miles circumference. Um, big. And I saw one report that says that the Tower of Babel could have actually been a step pyramid. Right. So the base of it would have been like a step pyramid yeah, going yeah, up yeah. to the tower. But again, can't confirm this because no one's around. So the Book of Jubilees is the closest thing we've got to an actual description yeah. of the of the actual finished tower. Well, not finished, but yeah, constructed <laughs> tower, partially constructed tower. Yes, and we've already touched on Nimrod. Nimrod. <laughs> Nim I just love that name. I can't believe it was an actual yeah. person. Yeah, Nimrod the giant. Obviously, he was said to be the one to go against God. And it was due to the flood. And right. he just wasn't happy with the fact that uh, God, you know, was testing humans. Mm -hmm. And he actually saw it as a chance to rebel against God and be like, no, we, we are humans. We are powerful. And in some descriptions, I read that one of the reasons Nimrod did it as well was he wanted to elevate humans to that godly level. Oh, right. So okay. he, in a way, challenged God at his own game. And yeah. be like, we're just as powerful when we unite, which is another reason as to why he that, scattered them. With that would annoy, annoy a, a, a deity, I would imagine, yeah. And in, as always, in good Josh fashion, I've... Um, got one of my notes in the wrong place so would you like to know another religion that um, <laughs> has a similar story go for it why not <coughs> the book of mormon what yes no no surely not yep a man named jared and his family the jesus christ and the latter-day saints yeah boy it was not even a thing three thousand years ago how can they have a story of babel well I put it down to the fact that the Book of Mormon are a funny little religion. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They are... <laughs> no offense, but I I like Mormons and stuff because I've seen the Book of Mormon, the the play and things. Oh right, yeah, yeah. And they're a little bit wacky and a little bit kooky. Cut tiny bit, yeah. But they. To me, they don't seem to be causing any harm or anything. They oh, just, they're not. not they've really. got their own little rules and they yeah. they live in this little bubble in a way. And I just think like, out of all the religions, I look at Mormon as like, oh, you're cute, aren't you? Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? They're very happy little people. Yeah. 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 No offence, Mormons. <laughs> well, I honestly don't believe that anything from the Book of Mormon sh should be 3,000 years old. Well, this might change your mind because Go there's some connections here. So Don't I'm, tell me Nimrod wrote the Book of Mormon. Oh, no, no. That would, <laughs> that would have been good, though. <laughs> that would have been a real get out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> Nimrod is here, though. Oh, is he? <laughs> a man in named... the Book of Mormon? Uh, yeah. Man, well, I don't need to read that. Not in person form. Oh, okay. So a man named Jared and his family asked God for their language not to be confounded. 
at the great tower because of their prayers god preserves their language and leads them to the freedom to the valley of nimrod oh oh okay oh he's got his own valley yeah wow we we'll have to visit that sometime <laughs> and road trip i've actually got a little fact on nimrod here yeah i should have brought this up in the giants episode but i didn't find it at that at that point all oh, right nimrod was noah's great grandson was Noah a giant? No. <laughs> How was Nimrod a giant then? He was a giant. I'm sure he was a giant. Yeah, Nimrod was a giant. Yeah. So he was a giant man. But also, I don't know if you remember, with the um, the giant episode, yeah. back in those days, some of the scripture and the Bibles only described giants as being maximum of like eight feet tall. So we would oh, consider yeah, them yeah. kind of but the normal. But Nephilim would... Didn't they say that they described the Nephilim as we were as ants to them? And yes. And they looked upon us as yeah, that or yeah. something like that. So it's you thought a bit the Nephilim would be massive guys. Yeah. But maybe, I'm not too sure, maybe Nimrod is just a descendant of the Nephilim. I'm not. Maybe. I, I don't, don't know. know. Well, technically, I guess uh, everybody is pretty much a descendant of Noah anyway, if it was yeah. a, actually a global flood, which I don't believe it was. No. Which makes sense because it. It says here in my notes that although Nimrod was Noah's great-grandson, he was 700 years after the Great Flood. So... Yeah, people did live a long time back then, though, didn't they? <laughs> 700 years after. Well, yeah, there was that... I'm sure there's a guy in the uh, Old Testament of the Bible, I think his name was Methuselah. Mm -hmm. he, he was rumoured to have lived like 900 years or something stupid like that. Oh. He was like the oldest person in the world. 900. Yeah. I won't want to live that long, I don't think. No, I don't think I would. So Imagine how wrinkly you'd be by then. <laughs> you would literally just be a prune yeah. or a giant <laughs> scrotum. Just... So, I've got a quote here from a Genesis 11, chap I think it's chapter 4. I don't know if it's chapters. I've not read Genesis. Uh, it'd be chapter 11, verse 4. There you go. I'm glad you're here, mate, because I, <laughs> I wouldn't know. So come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. And that was a quote from the Bible there. Amen. And I'm just going to wrap it up with there is no evidence that the Tower of Babel ever existed. Bible studies expert and archaeologist Tom Mayer found ancient ruins, including writings and descriptions that match artifacts also found. But, again, it's just speculation. All right. So, that's pretty much all I got. And the, the only thing that I don't under, understand with the Tower of Babel and stuff is, it, I think it goes along with the Great Flood as well. Why... In the Bible, does God seem to hate humans? Why is he always punishing them? <laughs> He's a vengeful God. Isn't it? I the Old Testament is very much like that, isn't it? And that makes zero sense <coughs> to me. Like, these people are already worshipping him and praying to him and asking him to cure me of this and help me with that. And instead, he's like, mass genocide, tear down your towers... Scatter you across the earth, and I I can't it's understand. Almost as though he doesn't care at all. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. No, that that is there's a massive difference between the Old Testament mm. God and the New Testament God, who's just like peace, love, and goodwill to all men, and all that sort of thing. Yeah, the Old Testament, very violent. Yeah. Very yeah. It's, it's almost as though he cares about the the earth, but not its inhabitants. Yeah. Weird thing, isn't it? And it reminds me of, you know, when um, Stephen Fry done that video and he was talking to like a priest or something and he said, well, why, why don't you believe in God when there's the miracles and stuff around the world? And um, I'm paraphrasing, but Stephen Fry says something like, well, why would I worship a God that puts tiny insects into starving children's eyes and kills people and gives children cancer and things like that? And it kind of, I'm with him on that. It doesn't... Yeah. And I'm not I'm not slating. It sounds like I'm just slating all religions and stuff. Like we've we've spoke about this before. There's a lot of good in religion, morals, things like that. But me personally, I've just I've never understood that part of religion. Yeah, I've never understood that. The thing, the way I see religion, or at least this particular part of it, 
is there's, there's a difference between uh, oh, how do I put this? Like, if you 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 love your creation, but your creation can self evolve, can develop itself, mm-hmm. but you need to maintain the balance. So although you love it, sometimes tough love is involved, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And, uh, as a way to say it, you know. Um, that's why, you, you know, it's just about keep maintaining balance. And humans are very good at tipping the balance. We try to tip it in our favour, you know. Mm. In my lifetime, the human population, global population, has literally doubled. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, uh, it, it, it is running out of control. Unless we do something drastic, it will go out of control, mm. possibly even still within our lifetimes, within what we've got left of our lives. Yeah. If it doubles again in another 40 years, we could be in a lot of trouble. Yeah. yeah we true. could even wipe ourselves out, extinction event, you know? So to say, oh, why does God give children cancer? Why does he do this? Why did he create the flood? Maintain balance. Yeah. I just don't want to worship a god that does those things. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. You know, I don't know. But anyway, I got a bit sidetracked there. But that is the Tower of Babel. Tower of Babel, yes. The society that no one's ever seen it. No, no one's ever climbed it. Or so I guess it's only actually been described in scriptures Mm. and on monuments. Has it been like etched into? um, Yeah, they found some. They found some artifacts and stuff, but it was it was mainly. Scripture. Well, the the artifacts. One of the artifacts I saw online that they found, it was like a step pyramid, right. but there was no tower at the top. Right. So, it, it was kind of uh, some of the scriptures and the artifacts that they found. I think Tom Mayer was his name. Mm-hmm. Some of them go hand in hand with each other, where it's like uh, the scriptures were describing certain steps and foundations. Mm. So then they've just kind of put two and two together and assume that it's the Tower of Babel that yeah. they're describing. And But there's actually no concrete evidence. And there it. never will be, because it was probably... Even if they could manage to build it, mm. considering they were working with what you, you said, bricks, quarried stone and clay... Yeah. You imagine trying to build a skyscraper these days out of <laughs> yeah. that material without having any like reinforcement, without having steel, steel or rebar or anything mm-hmm. like that. I mean, nowadays they construct um, skyscrapers around the elevator shaft, don't they? They make yeah. a massive great elevator shaft at the middle of the building and then they literally construct all the floors and stuff around it mm-hmm. so that it's got s- strength, particularly when things like earthquakes hit. Yeah, yeah. You know, imagine building a massive great sandstone tower going up 1.8 miles into the sky. First earthquake comes. Yeah. Oh, the top's come off my tower. Yeah, it's a good know, point. It's going to happen. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, it doesn't surprise me that there's no evidence of the Tower mm. of Babel because even if they tried to construct it, there's no way they could have got it finished. No. Not with their, the level of... Um, construction materials that they've got, the, the technology that they've got. It just wouldn't happen. Yeah. And I genuinely thought there'd be more to this story, but it's almost like a, a side story in the Bible. Like, you know how the, yeah. the classic story of Jesus turned, was it wine into fish? What did he do? <laughs> <laughs> he fed the 5,000 with fish and, yeah. and bread. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. like once I started doing the research and I was just getting the same story, five-minute story pop up, I was like, oh. How am I going to do a whole half hour, 40 minute podcast on one little subsection? Well, of... you've pretty much managed it, mate. We're at 38 minutes now. Oh. And we're... <laughs> there you go. We but... haven't even got to the paranormality scale yet. No, true. Well, speaking of, what, what are you going to go for? Uh, to be honest, mate, low. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking. Is it the fact there's no evidence? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no evidence, no scientific merit to it. Um, I like Nimrod, so I'm going to give it a three. A three? <laughs> Fair enough. Just because Nimrod's in it. Yeah. Nimrod does keep coming back into the uh, the podcast. Yeah. All we right. should make him our mascot. Hey, should we, hey, we name Minion Nimrod. Yeah, Nimrod. <laughs> yeah, he's now got a name. He's not just Minion anymore. Now he's Nimrod. Hey, don't Nimrod. <laughs> <laughs> but you're giving it a three. 
I can't imagine you'll give it much above one, to be honest. Oh, if, well. If, if it gets a one. <laughs> I was actually thinking 1.5. Yeah. Mainly because of Nimrod. But also, I like the idea of the people uniting and the the aspect oh, of right, the yeah, story yeah, yeah, yeah. of yeah, yeah, yeah. trying to build a tower to get to the heavens to... Or to act conf- smart God. Yeah, to yeah, confront yeah. God and stuff. I just think... That's quite cool. I've not really heard many edgy stories from the Bible. So yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, so I'll give it 1.5. 1.5. Okay, so that would put us at 2.25, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I have no yeah, idea. Yeah, 2.25 on average. So, yeah, it's quite a low one. Yeah. We're yeah. not going to apologise, though, because we can't do high scores all the time. No. No, we you know, we got we got to offset of that against something. We've got to give some examples of not paranormal stuff or not believable stuff to... Yeah, we've got to balance out, haven't we? Yeah. All about balance, the force. It is. So anyway, uh, in other news, just quickly before we finish, um, obviously this episode I think is the third week into us activating adverts. Mm-hmm. So if you've sat through three weeks of adverts on our podcast and you're already getting fed up of it, there is things you can do. One, obviously, YouTube. We still have no control over adverts on YouTube. We're not monetized on there. Yeah. Um, if ever you see an advert on YouTube at, at this point in time on our, our podcast, it's not us doing it. That is all YouTube. They're getting the profit from that. We're not. Um, so you can always go and catch up with us on YouTube rather than just downloading it. But if you do like to download an audio podcast because you like to listen to it in your car on the way to work or something like that, but you already getting annoyed with the adverts you can subscribe to our patreon yeah uh that i know a lot of um creators and that 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 they have like multiple tiered patreons where you can pay like two pound four pound ten pound twenty pound and all that sort of thing we've just got one one level yeah everybody's equal two pound and you get advert free early access it's uh because normally our ad uh, our podcast comes out at midnight on monday morning if you go for the early access, you'll get it at 9 a.m. on the Sunday beforehand. So a whole 15 hours before everybody else can hear it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we probably will do some bonus content, maybe like once a month or something like that, where we'll just, you yeah. know, just something a little bit extra for the people who are actually paying us. So, mm-hmm. You know, I mean, because yeah. it is down to, if you think that we're actually giving you something of value, then... That's great. I mean, thank you for, for the extra support. Yeah. Um, and if, if if you don't want to do that, that's fine as well. Thank yeah, you for yeah. listening. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for putting up with the adverts. Yeah, yeah, we appreciate it. <laughs> um, and just one more thing is obviously we haven't really talked about it too much. Um, I think we mentioned it in the, the Halloween special, but we do have some awesome merch Here's one of the T-shirts. I'm holding it up to the camera now. Obviously, on the audio mm. podcast, you can't hear it. That this, one's got a Ouija board it on does. it. It does. It has a Ouija board on it. It was designed by one of our Discord members. So um, if you come along and join our Discord, you can enter little competitions like that that we sometimes have. Yeah. Um, or go and buy our merch. <laughs> yeah. uh, you can uh, get that at... Uh, we'll add a paranormality uk. <laughs> dot myspreadshop.co.uk <laughs> that's so long and confusing let's add a link where there where there is a link there's always a link uh, uh, in the description so there it is there there'll be a link to patreon as well in case you want to go and join that obviously no obligation on that one but we'd love it if we can get maybe 50 subscribers on patreon yeah, we'll, we'll we'll do a challenge we'll do a challenge yeah uh and the one that we first come up with was we'd do do the podcast in a dress <laughs> yeah. rather than just in our jeans and t-shirt like we normally yeah. do. I don't know how, how effective that would be because it's sat at our little table. but And know, it's, it's normal these days. If you can come up with better challenges, to you want to challenge us, you know, uh, we'll, we'll set stages. You know, if we hit 50 Patreons, we'll do a challenge and then maybe 100 and then 200 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Come on, join the Discord. Let us know your challenges what you want to see us do, if you want to eat Josh eat sushi, if you want to see Josh eat sushi. Mm. I hate salmon sushi. Yeah. Oof. If you want to see me eat goat, goat's cheese, oh. I absolutely hate goat's cheese. 
put it as a challenge. We will do it for subscribers. Yeah. We will do it. <laughs> There's nothing we won't whore ourselves out for. <laughs> <laughs> and until then, I've been Pirate. I'm Josh. This has been Paranormality UK. Ta-ta. Ta-ta.